Hi, and welcome to VAB's Measurement Innovations Series. I'm Marian Vita, SVP Director of Integrated Strategy and Marketing at the VAB. And you know, we understand that you're keeping up with the latest in TV measurement can be difficult. It can be uh, challenging, it's changing so quickly. Um, and so we've developed a series um, that will be running quarterly to help keep you informed and also inspired to think of measurement uh, a little differently. So um, we have heard from marketers that the best way to understand how they can use new TV measurement solutions is through real world examples, real world case studies, um, kind of how to's from brand and just real, you know, real world inspiration. And so this series is a collection of case studies that show how brands are adding new ways of measuring their video campaigns to optimize engaged success. So um, exciting and that our first piece was released um, just this week and you can find it on our website along with some other helpful TV measurement education pieces like this eight page glossary of untangling terminology in video measurement. So um, as part of the series, we are also really, really pleased to be able to bring you um, the opportunity of hearing directly from those leaders behind the case studies in daily webinars um, that ran this week. So um, with that, I am delighted to have two great guests from Samba TV who are going to talk to us today about achieving holistic measurement with OmniScreen strategies. So join me in welcoming Chris Magel, VP, Head of Agency Development, and Cole Strain, VP of Measurement Products. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Marianne. We are very excited <laughs> to be here. We're really appreciative of being included in the VAB's webinar series, and we are excited to take this group through our capabilities in the area of deduplicated measurement. Excellent. So I'm going to get I'm going to get right into it, if that's okay. Yeah, um, sure. I would just um, I'm just going to make a quick note um, for that. Anyone who registered uh, will get a link to this recording, so um, you'll get that in the next couple of days. So um, stay tuned for that. And Chris, awesome. Go ahead. Okay, well, um, first off, we are here to talk about deduplicated measurement, and I think it's always good to orient clients or potential clients around how Samba does build its measurement product or how we bring that product to market, and also just orient folks around the businesses that Samba is in. So Samba is a data company. We are an identity company. We're an audience company, and we're a measurement company, and it all starts with uh, the fact that Samba does collect uh, TV viewing data from automated contact rec recognition technology that sits within smart TVs. We actually collect that viewership data from over 24 manufacturers around the globe and 10 manufacturers in the US, which makes for a very representative data set. And as you can imagine, we're able to understand what people are viewing from a programming standpoint. And also we are able to understand what advertising households have been exposed to as well. And so the first business that we're in is we actually will process that data and we will license it out so that agencies and marketers and publishers have the opportunity to understand what people are watching on linear and OTT television. And in addition to that, understanding what uh, advertising households have been exposed to provides very valuable information for various types of businesses as well. Now, when you've got a good understanding of what folks are watching on linear and, and streaming, that enables uh, you to build interesting uh, target audiences. So for example, as a marketer, you might be interested in identifying uh, folks who watch a certain kind of programming, or uh, more broadly, you might be interested in targeting households who have been exposed to your linear TV schedule, uh, maybe a, reach extent, uh, a frequency extension strategy. Or uh, actually, uh, what's more broadly used is we often will make targets available for our clients uh, made up of households who have been unexposed to their linear TV schedules, which is essentially a reach extension strategy that we make available in programmatic CTV and cross-screen digital for our clients. We are also the owner and manager of our own household identity graph. Essentially, an identity graph is a map of all of the television sets, the mobile devices, the tablets, the laptops, that exists within over 100 million households in the United States. And that map, and which we update on a daily basis, allows us to offer a number of different identity services to clients. We help clients deduplicate disparate sets of data. We help clients build their own identity graphs. 
And so you can see we do a number of things with the data and the identity graph that we bring to market. Now, when you put TV advertising exposure data together with digital data, and you lay that data over an identity graph, that allows you to do something that is really has not been possible in our industry until a few years ago, which is true deduplicated measurement across linear TV and across streaming and across all of the digital activity that a client may have. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So I'm just gonna get quickly into the assets that make up the product. Uh, as I said, we are the collector of TV viewing data via automated content recognition. And I think what's really important for this group to understand is that Samba um, actually does not assume the opt-in. We, we are an opt-in company, meaning that whenever a consumer sets up their smart television set that they bought from one of the manufacturers you see on this screen, they are presented with the opportunity to opt-in for Samba to measure their viewing behavior. We offer a number of different interesting incentives for them to do it, but we do not assume that they're opted in and then make them opt out, which is a very particular strategy that we've taken. We're a global company and we've tried to align our practices with GDPR and CCPA from the start. Now, as I said, we're a global TV company and uh, we've got active products in about six countries right now. That's the US, that's Canada, the UK, Germany, Italy, and uh, Australia. And we've got beta products available in uh, France, Spain, and Japan. Now our TVs are sold all around the world and we have the opportunity to light up data products all across the world and we'll be doing so as our clients need throughout the different regions of the world. In the US, we manage a 3 million household ACR only TV viewing panel. That panel is made up of the 10 manufacturers that you see here on the screen. And I think the important thing that we would like you to take away from this is this is the most representative of the US population of any of the TV data sets that are out there. The reason that is, is because we have this many manufacturers contributing to that data. And that would be versus most other data sets are based on maybe one or two uh, television manufacturers. So there's a lot more normalization that needs to be done. Samba's unweighted population of our panel is actually closer to the US census than any other panel data out there. And as I said, we do own and operate our own identity graph that begins with the persistent ID that we have from all of the TVs that we measure. And we actually partner with a number of different companies that provide different identifiers and we pull them all together, whether they be mobile IDs or uh, digital activation signals that we're getting through advertising. And we own and manage this identity graph, this map of the United States households, all of the TVs, the tablets, the mobile devices in those households gets updated every single day. Now, what's important is that that, uh, that map of the United States needs to be very accurate so that when you are deduplicating measurement, you're understanding where all of those impressions are, are being served. So you'll have um, your TV data that's captured via ACR. You'll have your digital impressions that are captured via pixel. You bring all that together, you may have a billion impressions. You need to understand which of those impressions were served in Chris Magel's household, which of those impressions were served in Cole Strain's household, and across what devices and what publishers and what environments those advertisements were, were, were served. And that is how you perform the duplicated measurement. So this is how it all comes together. You've got your TV data, you've got your digital data, you lay that across the identity graph with the help of a number of data science and analytic professionals within the Samba organization. And that helps us bring products to market like our data licensing products, our audience products, and our measurement products, which is what uh, Cole is now going to go into a little bit more detail on for you today. All right. Thank you, Chris. Let's talk about Samba's omni-screen measurement capabilities. Uh, the assets that Chris just walked you through, when you bring them all together, you can actually do a lot of very, very cool measurement. So I just wanted to give you an overview of what that measurement looks like and what the capabilities are. So it all begins with audience measurement, being able to understand the, the households that you are reaching, regardless if it's through linear TV, CTV, or, or digital, regardless of the property or the ad format, being able to understand the demographics of the audience that you're reaching, but in a deduplicated way. 
Because of Samba's identity graph, we're able to deduplicate all impressions back to the household level, giving you a very true sense of reach and frequency that's consistent across all of your campaigns. In addition, the identity graph makes it really easy for us to pair our data with a number of different outcomes data sets. And this could be our first party data that we collect via the Samba pixel. This could be a partnership that enables us to do foot traffic or box office measurement, a variety of different outcomes that we're able to pair back to either the linear or the digital or the omni-screen impact. We're also a market leader in TuneIn. Because we have the ACR data, we're able to understand the in-house viewership behavior. We've then paired this with our, our specifically designed synthetic control methodologies that are specifically designed for TV that allow us to show the causal impact of your media on tune-in rate in the living room. So SOM has been a measurement business for a while. Uh, we're, we're, I think, five years into the business at this point, and we have a pretty solid track record of being able to deliver measurement in nearly every vertical. Uh, we delivered 600 measurement studies in 2021 and saw 47 billion raw impressions internationally as measured in Q3. So this is a very scaled business and it's something we have built a lot of expertise in over the years from a variety of verticals and just a lot of at-bats being able to deliver measurement and hone that expertise in-house. Not only that, but we were very honored to be nominated or, or were the recipient of the Adweek Reader's Choice Award for or Best in Measurement Solutions. Uh, this was a very exciting moment for us last summer. So thank you so much for everyone who voted. And we're very excited to be working with all of you on this. This is this was just a really great and fun moment for us. So thank you so much for participating. But in more recent news, we've also partnered recently with D Disney. Um, uh, Disney Ad Sales has started partnering with Samba. They're a full stack customer of ours and have been for years, but on the measurement space, we are now bringing our true reach and frequency measurement to Disney properties, allowing them to see the impact from a single source of truth of both the linear and the digital and show how those strategies fit together very nicely um, across all Disney properties. All right, let's talk about how this measurement actually makes an impact in the life of brands. So we're going to start our first case study here is from an auto manufacturer um, where we were trying to help them understand how their digital campaign and linear campaign fit together into cohesive strategy. We're going to dive into results here in just a minute. But first, I really think it's helpful to walk through a demo of the product so you can see what an advertiser would see as they are reviewing our measurement results. Yeah, that's great. All right, so this is our true reach and frequency dashboard. Uh, this is, uh, once again, this combines our ACR data as well as the Samba pixel data via our identity graph to be able to show a holistic omni-screen impact. And that's what you're seeing here at the top is the full campaign delivery from linear CTV as well as digital. Uh, in this case, we had just shy of 1.2 billion impressions served to 67 million households, bringing in a frequency uh, just north of 17. Uh, the, the platform allows you to see the unique reach by, uh, by platform, by TV and digital, digital only as well as TV only, some insights related to frequency as well as unique reach as it changes throughout the course of the campaign, as well as a very granular overlap analysis that allows you to see how each, each uh, specific uh, marketing point, each network, each publisher, each digital publisher overlaps. So just as an example, uh, Network Zero here actually has a very high overlap. Um, that might be an opportunity for uh, revisiting allocation for a future campaign. However, one of the things I always like to call out is the ability to get very granular. The granular insights are what provide the most opportunity here for advertisers to improve as they go throughout time. Uh, you can do this by demo or DMA, but I really like to talk about TV viewership behavior. So in, in Samba language, a heavy TV viewer is the top 20% of our measurement panel. These are the, the most frequent watchers and they consume the most TV. And look how these results change. The heavy TV viewers consumed almost half of the impressions but delivered less than a third of the reach, generating this super high frequency here of 34. As we dive in to what a TV level and network level insight would, would be, you can see that Network 28 here delivered a very high number of heavy TV viewers, but had a fairly moderate frequency. Whereas if you look at Network 26, you'll see that they didn't deliver that much in terms of reach, 
to heavy TV viewers, but delivered a very high frequency. And it's this type of granular insight that's going to allow an advertiser to make very informed decisions as they move forward with future campaigns and try to plan to be more efficient in the future. So let's take a look at the results here for auto brand, for the auto brand A, uh, our blinded study. So th they had a very huge TV reach, but we actually saw that most networks didn't deliver very much in terms of unique reach, typically less than 10%. This overlap led to that high frequency we were talking about. Heavy TV viewers with a frequency over 34, but light TV viewers saw a frequency much closer to five. We saw that digital tactics were more efficient at driving unique reach, and so were multicultural net TV networks. So our recommendation for this brand was just to increase digital budgets, uh, focusing though more on unexposed and underexposed populations to find that better balance between reach and frequency as they go forward. Moving on to our next case, uh, this is a uh, home electronics and appliance manufacturer who is actually using that same TRF, that same true reach and frequency dashboard and reporting. But in this case, it was more about optimizing their digital publisher selection. So as we ran through the results for them, we actually found a pretty healthy mix between TV and digital. It was very appropriately balanced. You can see this from the graphic on the bottom right, a very nice balance between the two channels. Um, on TV, we saw that ESPN and HGTV actually delivered the highest unique reach uh, and that digital native tactics were the best at driving you uh, reach from, from digital. Uh, unique reach from digital. So our recommendation in this case was actually more about optimizing vendor selection, considering the full omni-screen performance. If you look at this graphic here on the bottom left, that green is the overlap between the TV and digital population. And we think there was an opportunity for them to decrease that in future campaigns by selecting the, the digital vendors that generated the most unique reach for them and shedding a few others from the plant. And Cole, I'm just going to jump in and remind the audience, or at least inform the audience, that um, while these all look like sort of one-off type studies, I want to be clear, that dashboard that Cole walked you through, that's a live dashboard. The campaign is being updated on a daily basis with maybe a two, maybe max three-day lag. So you're able to have discussions with your agency or with your marketing team on a regular basis about what you're seeing and, and provide optimization uh, suggestions in flight. Absolutely. Uh, that tees us up very nicely into our final case study here where uh, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to, to show off the newest member of the Samba measurement family, which is our incremental reach dashboard. Like Chris was saying, this is very much leaning into the in-flight optimization capabilities and the ability to actually impact a campaign to reach your goals mid-flight. So this is our incremental reach dashboard. It is built off the same reach and frequency, uh, the same panel, the same identity graph, and the same deduplicated reach and frequency we see from TRF, this time just with a different delivery layer. So this is the incremental reach dashboard. You'll see that this is a lot of the similar metrics you were seeing from TRF. Once again, deduplicated households with deduplicated frequency, but we introduced some new metrics to help highlight the incremental reach focus. Cost per incremental household, as well as an ICPM, cost per thousand incremental impressions. Uh, we also surface insights such as the amount of incremental lift driven by the digital campaign, where the incremental devices were being served, you can see delivery over time, as well as geographic distribution at a very granular level, as well as full campaign omni-screen details broken out by TV only, TV plus digital, incremental reach by device, state, or DMA. Uh, similar to TRF, we also offer full campaign uh, breakouts for the TV campaign, showing geographic distribution, as well as what the channels or uh, the networks where the media was run. But for optimization, the real strength is going to be on our digital tab, where we are able to break down at the line level how much contribution each line level is bringing to, uh, each line item is bringing to the overall incremental reach of the campaign. So in this particular example, there's a lot of customization here, but we are looking at creative audience inventory. So this is the hybrid SUV group uh, for cord cutters with CTV on this 15 second spot. 96% of the, of the households reached were incremental to the overall campaign. And you can see the ICPM here as well, allowing to conveniently see <laughs> the, uh, the most efficient light items for re any reallocation or optimization of budget in uh, mid-flight to make sure that you're generating the, the greatest reach possible from the campaign. 
Um, and this, this incremental reach dashboard is something that's relatively new for Samba. We launched it earlier this year as part of our ICPM product offering that allows advertisers to only pay for the impressions that are incremental to the overall campaign. So the results from this campaign were, were, were very strong. Uh, just it was one of those campaigns that you, as a researcher, that you love to be able to present. Uh, we saw some good opportunities to optimize mid-flight, enable, enabling the brand to increase their overall reach from the campaign, but generally it was highly successful. The CTV campaign delivered 95% to unexposed households, saw nearly a 7% increase in full campaign omni-screen reach. So my favorite recommendation is just keep going. Uh, there was definitely some opportunities to streamline some of the tactics, maybe tighten up some frequency caps, but in general, this campaign is a success. And these are the things that we love to be able to present when we're sharing measurement results. Thank you, sir. Okay, to finish it off, um, for this audience, why should you work with Samba? Why should you work with Samba as your measurement partner? Well. I think the biggest reason is that we bring a differentiated offering. Um, we are the only measurement provider out there, the only deduplicated measurement provider out there who's bringing our own TV data to the, to the table, uh, who, whose data is the most representative of the U.S. population and their viewing habits. And while we may not have the largest panel in the industry, we certainly have the most representative and it is certainly well big enough to, uh, to be able to create the uh, the granularity and the scale necessary to measure any size audience and any size media partner within that schedule. Uh, we own and operate our own identity graph as well. As I said, most other solutions are, are licensing these pieces. These are all owned and operated pieces that we bring together. So the differentiation here is we bring a different data set. We bring a much more integrated and connected product from end to end whether it's the data, the identity, or the analytics we, we put forth and the tech that we use to visualize it all. And so our clients are seeing more granular insights. They tend to have higher match rates. There's not as much of a loss of resolution because we, are all, we own all of the pieces. We're not trying to bring uh, different pieces together from different parts of the business. Uh, and then finally, to end off this, uh, this discussion, before we get into questions, uh, the VAB has asked all of us to share what we feel are best practices in measurement for marketers and for other uh, constituencies looking to get into deduplicated measurement. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first and foremost, you, you need to identify your most valuable audience. And by that, we mean what data is going to provide you the closest definition of your core customer or your core customer prospect, regardless of what you may be transacting on. We think if you're gonna be de doing deduplicated measurement of the impact on your business outcomes, you wanna measure it against an audience that is most closely representative of your customer set. Uh, you should differentiate your business objectives from the research questions you're looking to answer. So when you're measuring, you wanna make sure the measurement and the outcomes you're measuring against are, are tied to your business objectives or are your business objectives. There's a lot of questions you wanna answer with measurement. And as you test and learn, the answers to those research questions are what are gonna help you get better at delivering and optimizing against the business objectives. Yeah. The business outcomes should be linked to media outcomes. Why? Two big reasons. One, it's great for planning. So uh, you know, rather than just planning against the most impressions or the most GRPs for the money, it makes more sense to figure out what are the metrics within media that are most closely aligned with your business outcomes. And that can be done through uh, analytic work from your measurement partner or from your own in-house analytic team. But understand what the media metrics are that are most important to you. And then when you have those media outcomes, think about measuring those outcomes uh, uh, because they're much more available to you on a real-time basis often than sometimes your business outcomes. Uh, when you get into a deduplicated measurement process, there's a lot of stakeholders involved, whether that's your marketing team, your creative team, your data team, your agency, the partners that you're measuring. It's important that all of the stakeholders know what you're undertaking, whether it's a proof of concept or whether it's your day-to-day -day measurement. They got to know what, what they're measuring and why they're measuring. And if they, all the parties are on the same page, you're going to be able to get more accurate data and make better decisions. Uh, all measurement professionals, I hope, will thank me for this best practice. They're not usually in all of the best practices, but build in enough time. There's a lot of things you need to do to prepare for the data to be collected, whether it's tagging yeah. your advertising 
appropriately or setting up the metrics or level setting with all the stakeholders. Prep time means that when you actually get into it, your results will be more accurate. They'll be read by all the right people and you'll be able to respond more quickly. When you're choosing your cross-channel measurement partner, we believe in try before you buy. What does that mean? It means that you actually should run some proofs of concept with a couple of measurement providers that you have some confidence in. So have them take a look at a campaign you've run recently, have multiple players actually measure the same campaign, take a look at the differences, see whether, you know, see what their coverage is and the granularity that they offer you of insight across audiences, across channels, across publishers, tactics, that kind of a thing. And at the end of the day, hopefully, someone's going to rise and are gonna be obvious that that is the single source of truth that you can trust on an ongoing basis to measure the impact of your campaigns. Uh, so thank you everybody for spending a half an hour with us. We'd love to get started with you. Our email addresses are here. If you wanna learn more, please send us an email. And um, I think I'm gonna now just uh, stop yeah. sharing the presentation if we wanna get into questions. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that's really, Chris, thank you for sharing. I think that's really good guidance. Um, some of it, you know, practical, um, and I, especially, you know, building in time, getting, you know, rallying key stakeholders. I think that's really important for marketers. To, we, we've all been there at the 11th hour trying to, um, you know, get something live um, and done. So I appreciate, appreciate you sharing that. Um, Cole, I was just wondering quickly, the, the dashboard that you took us through, is that something advertisers have access to? To play around with, or do you usually generate reports and send reports through? Absolutely, uh, we do both. Um, so the dashboards are, are available for all of our advertisers who are partnering with us. Um, you know, depending on the objective, we'll either either talk about the true reach and frequency or the incremental reach dashboard. But on top of this, we also have a report generator system that allows us to produce insights that we typically wouldn't surface in a report, right? So for something more granular, more nuanced, you know, uh, series retention in sports is something that comes to mind. That's something best delivered with a research manager in a in a study sort of format versus a real time optimization dashboard. Right. Yeah, I can I can put, I can you know I can envision certain certain. Uh advertisers I know totally geeking out on that dashboard and uh, and pouring over those uh, reports. So um, very good stuff. Um, and thank you for for taking us through it. I think it's helpful to see sort of the, the sausage sometimes and see how you know, see how everything co comes together. Yeah, we might have been taking um, a chance to do the demo, but hopefully I think it all got pulled <laughs> off well. <laughs> well, well done. It all worked. Um, very well done. And um, so, you know, Cole, you know, we talk about measurement platforms um, and there are, you know, there are a lot for advertisers to choose from, you mm -hmm. know, and, and Chris talked a little bit about this, but, you know, in terms of Samba's point of differentiation, you know, what do you usually tell advertisers to say, this is, you know, this is how we're different. Um, this is, you know, how our offering is a little unique. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I think the main thing I'd call out is there is so much value and having all of these technologies being owned end to end. Every time you are outsourcing a technology, a data set, a service, you are dealing, you're paying a tax, you're paying a match rate tax most specifically. So even if you have a very large panel, you start to introduce bias, you start to introduce reduction in size. Every time you partner with a new par party, a provider, the fact that our ACR data, the TV data, the identity graph, the Samba pixel, all of this is owned in-house, we get to uh, avoid all of those taxes and essentially be able to produce something that is high quality, that we are the experts on every step of the process, on what goes into it, what comes out of it, and how they precisely interact with each other. And there's a lot of value there in terms of efficiency, ultimately scale and just the uh, ability of, of, to consult and guide advertisers and agencies and publishers as they utilize these solutions to drive better performance. Sure, sure. I, I think, yeah, that all sounds right. And, um, you know, shifting gears a, a little bit, um, you know, some measurement solutions are offering themselves up as, you know, as currency grade, mm -hmm. um, which means to advertisers, they offer data upon which you know, TV can be bought and sold, you know, transacted. So. Chris, I was wondering if Samba has been included in any of those uh, currency tests. Yeah, so I think the best example of our involvement in this space would be the most recently announced partnership with Disney. Disney is bringing the total reach and frequency measurement forward for all of their clients and our, their clients are going to see in real time 
the individual impact of Hulu versus ESPN3 versus, I'm sorry, ESPN Plus, <laughs> ESPN Ocho <laughs> uh, versus you know, ABC versus uh, the TV channel. So, um, and, and, and we believe that that is currency ready. Like once we, once we have a number of clients under our belt over the next several months or a year, we think that there will be enough history and enough uh, benchmarking for uh, transactions to be considered on top of that. And we, we still have a journey to go through with a number of our publisher and our agency partners, but uh, we, we have a great product. It's ready for testing and learning and currency. We want all of our clients to know that. And it's just a matter of making everybody aware through things like this webinar of the capabilities that we do have and the ability to measure their schedules on a very advanced, holistic and uh, uh, data-driven way. Great. Um, and thank you. And I think it was really helpful to, to see, you know, see, get the overview, see some real live examples of how, you know, what brands are learning and then most importantly, how they're using those learnings um, to, you know, to, to create more successful campaigns. So thanks again, you guys, uh, Chris and Cole. Thank yep. you. It was nice um, chatting with you and thanks for taking us through that. Thank um, you everybody for joining us. Have yeah, a good day. And yeah, Thanks. and if you if you missed any of the sessions this week, um, you can find them all on our website. So uh, so they're all there, uh, all the, the case study reviews. So yep. Thanks again, guys, and um, have a great afternoon. Awesome. Bye bye.